Hello, my name is Edmond Jamna, and on behalf of DW Consult, I want to welcome you to Tutorials on the Go. Our zeal here is to help transition people with zero, struggling, or shaky base in accounting to an expert position and to a place of confidence. It is also a platform to assist in the smooth studying of the ACC and ICA professional qualifications, as well as for any tertiary accounting discipline. All that is required of you is to subscribe to our channel and click on the notification bell as well to be part of the program. Tutorials on the Go. Bringing accounting to heart. Now, to this episode's lecture. Media acquisition. So, if the acquisition of a subsidiary is done in the course of an accounting year, its results must be prorated in the year of its acquisition. Then, revenue and expenses are to be assumed to accrue evenly unless otherwise stated. So, let's test our understanding. On 1st July 2015, Vicky, which is represented by V, acquired 60% of the equity shares of money represented by M. Statement of profit or loss for the year ended 31st December 2015 are as follows. So we have revenue for both cost of sales, gross profits, distribution costs, administrative expenses leading to profit before interest and tax. We bring finance costs, other income, then profits before tax, taxation, profits before the year, then we get the figures. So money declared a dividend during the year of $10,000. So that belonging to the parent has to be eliminated. Money also paid an interest on loan of $2,000 to Vicky. Intra-group interest has to be eliminated. We have to assume that the profits accrue evenly. So we are now supposed to prepare a consolidated statement of profit or loss for the Vicky group for the year ended 31st December 2015. We have revenue $2,600 for V. When we come to the subsidiary, because it was purchased six months into the year we would have to half their figures their revenue was thousand three hundred dollars when we half it that's six over two we get 650 then we sum it and get for the group we come for cost of sales we pick the entire figure for the parent we pick half of the subsidiary so it will provide 450 dollars then it will give the value for the group so when we less the cost of sales from the revenue we get gross profit of thousand four hundred for the parent 200 for the subsidiary 1600 for the group so we pick distribution cost the entire figure for vein half of the subsidiary we add them we get that of the group so we come for administrative expenses 190 for parents 24m group is 210 then the profit before interest and tax will be 1110 dollars 150 for m 1260 which is the summation for the group now when we come for the finance cost it will be 90 for the vein, which is the parent, then 15 for M, then 105 for the group. Then when we come for other income, so you realize that the 10 was for the parent. Then we less the 2, which is the interest that it took from the loan it granted to M. You remember the point on loan interest. Now we come to the dividend from the question. M declared a dividend of $10,000 and because V holds 60% of its shares, it will definitely get 60% of the dividend. So we have to less that 60% of it from what it has recorded. So it will be left with two. The two means that it is dividend or interest that came from outside the group. There was none for M. So the group will be $2,000. When we come for the profit before interest and tax, it will be 1010 for V, 135 for M, 1147 for the group then the tax will be 50 for v 15 for m then 65000 for the group which will lead to a profit for the year of 960000 for v 120000 for m 1082000 dollars for the group when we come to the distribution we first migrate the profit for the year so when we come to the profit distribution it will be a non-controlling interest of 48,000, which is 40% on the 120,000 profit for the year of the subsidiary. Then the parent will have the resulting figure, which is 48 less from the 1,082, giving a figure of $1,034,000. Let's just understand it for the last time. Greg Jane acquired 90% of set S on 1st April 2020. It means that three months has already elapsed. So we are going to only take nine out of the 12 months for the subsidiary. So the retained earnings of S were $20,000. Non-controlling interest is measured at fair value. The respective statement of profit or loss of the two companies for the year ended 31st December 2020 are as follows. So we have revenue 
for both cost of sales for both gross profits expenses profit before taxation income tax the profit for the year additional information an impairment review at the reporting date indicates the goodwill instead is to be impaired by twenty thousand dollars so we are to assume that the profits accrue evenly so we are to prepare a consolidated statement of profit or loss for the great group for the year ended 31st december 2020. for solution for consolidated statement of profit or loss we'll have revenue of hundred thousand for jane then we pick the entire revenue for a subsidiary so we take three quarters of it which is nine over twelve give us twenty seven thousand we add it to that of the parent get one twenty seven thousand for the group we do same for cost of sales forty five thousand for j nine thousand prorated for s then we come for gross profit fifty five thousand when we find the difference eighteen thousand for subsidiary seventy three thousand for the group expenses will be nineteen thousand five hundred for the group now the impairment will be attributed to the subsidiary which is two thousand for the year it's not going to be prorated because the goodwill arose out of the purchase so the entire figure will be attributed to the consolidated account then we come to profit before taxation forty thousand for the parent eleven thousand five hundred for the subsidiary fifty one thousand five hundred for the group then income tax will be eighteen thousand for the parent 4,500 after proration for the subsidiary, 22,500 for the group, which will provide a profit for the year of 22,000 for the parents, 7,000 for the subsidiary, 29,000 for the group. When we come to the profit attribution, we just migrate the profit for the year from the other page here. So 22,000 for parents, 7,000 for subsidiary group of $29,000. The non-controlling interest holds 10%. Now watch this the non-controlling interest was valued at fair value so the impairment will be attributed solely to the parent and when we're doing the calculation of the profit and loss we left two thousand for the subsidiary which led to its profit for the year of seven thousand because the nca is not supposed to share in it we'll add the two thousand back to the profit for the year before we attribute its profit to it so it will be ten percent of the seven thousand for the figure gotten here plus the two thousand impairment that was reduced giving nine thousand then the profit will be nine hundred dollars so the parents figure which is the balancing amount will be twenty eight thousand one hundred which is the twenty nine thousand less than nine hundred dollars okay people this is where we bring our discussion to a close i hope it went well if you have any comment or feedback for us do well to drop them in the comment section below and it will be timely and adequately addressed whilst at that kindly subscribe and turn on all notifications also, follow us on our various social media handles as captured on the screen. Catch us again on another episode of Tutorials on the Go. Till then, take care of yourself and stay blessed. Poker, poker.